Uh, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Claire. I'm the stakeholder and engagement manager with the the ARC Northwest Coast, and I'll, uh, I'm just going to do a brief introduction before I hand you over to Dilwara for the main main body of today. Um, so thank you everyone for coming. Um, as you may have seen when you entered, we are recording this session, um, so I hope that's all right with everyone. Obviously, if you aren't happy with um, with being recorded, you can always turn your camera off, um, and we won't be recording the breakout sessions, just um, Dilwara's main presentation. Um, so. Thank you for attending today, as I say. Um, just before we start the main event, um, I'm going to just give a quick introduction um, and a, I suppose an update on how the event came about for, for those of you that, that maybe don't know. Um, so as I said, my name's Claire. I'm the Stakeholder and Engagement Manager with the ARC, the Applied Research Collaboration Northwest Coast. Um, and my role is particularly about connecting communities and the voluntary sector into the research that's happening within the ARC. And a large part of how that's happening is something called the Corrin, which is the Community Research and Engagement Network. And that's something that we are currently um, developing, building up. It's been going for a little while now, but we're really uh, sort of trying to push it forward at the moment. And for those that don't know, the Corrin is about bringing together key partners from a, across health and social care research, um, including very importantly, the voluntary care, faith and social enterprise sector. So we really want to create a space for discussion and development of ideas for how to develop and deliver so, um, health research. So we want to share knowledge and skills through events like today. Um, we want to know how to better understand it and for people to be able to get involved. We want to know what matters to people in local areas and communities which health research could help improve. Um, and we want to make sure those communities are involved in developing, creating and actually doing research which can really change lives. So as I say, we're currently building up the, um, the Corrin. It's free to be part of. We hold events like this. We have more planned. Um, so, you know, there's no obligation to join the events. It's, it's totally free, but it does mean you'll get notified of events if you decide to become a member of the network. Um, all you need to do to become a member is to email me and I will put my email in the, the chat afterwards um, and then I can send you a quick contact form, you know, just name and address, that sort of thing. There's nothing nothing too onerous in it. But now I'm going to pass you over to Dilwara, who's the chief officer of Blackburn with Darwin Healthy Living, um, and they've been part of the, the ARC and its predecessor, the Clark, for, um, for many years. Um, so Dilwara has an amazing wealth of experience, not just on citizens juries, but on lots of other things. Um, so thank you so much for doing this today, Dilwara, and I will hand you over now for the uh, the main part of today's session. Thank you very much, Claire. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, I will waffle on for about 15 minutes with my presentation and then we're going to have uh, breakout rooms and then we'll do a feedback and then we'll uh, obviously have a bit of a reflection. So Claire's going to be my beautiful assistant today who is going to be uh, doing the slides. So Claire, if you could uh, kindly bring the presentation up for me. Thank you. So. Um, I'll have the next slide. Thanks, Claire. So uh, firstly, I'm just going to give you a bit of a background of uh, where I work. And uh, like Claire said, I'm a chief officer of a charity based in Blackburn called Blackburn with Darwin Healthy Living. Um, we've been a charity for about uh, 14 years. And before that, we were uh, lottery funded for five years and was part of the um, Healthy Living Centres before we became an independent charity. We've been uh, delivering citizens jury for our, over 10 years in the borough and we have developed a distinguished reputation for the work that we deliver, um, not just in the borough and we have delivered citizens jury um, in Lancashire as well. You probably see me refer to citizens jury as CJs sometimes, so um, that's what basically it is. Um, so some of our CJs um, that we've delivered have um, actually influenced policies, uh, strategic frameworks in the borough as well. Um, I'm just going to give you a bit of a brief examples of some of the public health and other funders uh, with uh, citizens juries we've delivered. So give you an example of a pharmacy one we did it was 
around community pharmacies, the work that they do. And one of the recommendations that came uh, was to have a shared um, infrastructure for patients understanding um, citizen, uh, pharmacies as well. We did an alcohol one where that was evaluated independently by Bolton University. And along that same line, we did a tobacco one. And some of the um, recommendations that came from that citizen's jury was to have an integrated stop smoking approach, tackling cheap and illicit tobaccos as well. Uh, we've recently done a loan sharks one where one of the recommendations from the community was to recruit and train local residents to support financial difficulties in communities. And one of the ones that I'm working on and just is currently um, getting fed into the strategic framework is the trauma informed communities uh, commissioned by the Lancashire Violence Reduction Network, which came off the adverse childhood experience one that was funded by public health. Thanks, Claire. So I can I just want to explain to you what is a citizen's jury. It's basically um, where a small group of citizens uh, that are randomly selected to deliberate on a given topic and provide an informed recommendations to address the issue at hand. The process of citizen jury it enables participants to understand the issues and have the opportunity to receive uh, information on different ways to tackle the problem. As all the participants are local people, they have an ideal perspective of why certain approaches may not have a desired effect. Basically, what that means is historically, a lot of the statutory organisation think they know what's best for the community, but um, it doesn't always work out when they actually put those um, approaches forward. So it's always good uh, to let the community have that uh, sort of middle ground. So the top down, uh, bottom up, uh, the community can come and have that middle ground, that informed sort of choice uh, and advice that's developed from that. Thanks, Claire. Uh, so where has uh, this been? So since uh, being int uh, introduced in the UK in 1996, citizens' juries have been held on issues ranging from healthcare uh, rationing to, um, ration to education policy, taste and decency on television. The model was adopted um, in the UK based on both uh, German planning cells and uh, American citizens jury. But it really gathered more traction when Gordon Brown became prime minister in 2007, when he identified citizens juries as a key means of involving the uh, public in decisions about the key issues. And he did work around the antisocial behavior, housing. He also wanted to address issues on health and services with that process. Um, as I said, government and local authorities uh, are some of the key people who have actually used citizens' juries to legitimise their actions, as well as uh, campaigners trying to demonstrate widespread and um, an informed public support for their cause. Qualitative social researchers trying to gain great insight into participatory governance and direct methods of democracy as well. Thanks, Claire. So, uh, so now we need to understand what the purpose of citizens' juries. So, citizens' juries are an attempt to democratise policy making through giving citizens the space to discuss at depth an issue of public significance leading to the production of a set of recommendations. So you can have a whole host of recommendations and it can be broken into different areas as well. The jury is usually made up of 12 to 16 people who meet weekly to examine carefully the chosen issue. During the period of the deliberation, the citizens share their experiences and opinions with each other, as well as with a series of external information providers. A lot of the time we call them guest speakers. So um, it's really important that uh, these guest speakers are um, chosen uh, accordingly to your chosen subject. The citizens' juries allow citizens to reflect, deliberate freely with each other on the questions at hand, assist, 
assisted by a facilitator. Uh, I'm not going to give too much away on this comment because you've got uh, when you go out into the breakout, you, you will understand why I'm not giving away too much information. They're also given the opportunity to scrutinize the information they're given from the speaker, whom they interrogate and ask questions, and given that opportunity to even build that bond and that rapport so that sense of security is given to the citizens' jury members as well. They are always, you know, at the beginning, we're always told about confidentiality, um, respecting each other's opinion, that there is no right or wrong, and all of that. So, in that sense, that it's given them that confidence to be able to um, hear those information that speaker is given and be able to um, comment on, well, this is how I understand it or not understand it. Thanks, Claire. So there are a couple of key elements to a citizen jury. Firstly, the process, and then I'll talk about the benefits as well as barriers. So there's always barriers to everything that we do. So the process of a citizen's jury, a recruitment can take up to a month to make up a good cross section of the community. Sometimes funders are very specific when deciding on who should be targeted to form the citizen's jury. Uh, so just to give you an example on this, recently we did a um, ex-offenders uh, citizen's jury. The funder specifically wanted uh, the jurors meant to be uh, were from the ethnic minority. So sometimes the funder can actually say, uh, I want them from a ward, a certain ward or a certain ethnic background. Or uh, We've never had anything to say a gender specific, but we've had um, funders specify which ward they want those residents from as well. So depending on the topic, a good time frame should not exceed more than eight to ten weeks, leaving at least two weeks to go through findings and possibly having jury members report back to funders. This is really, really important that you can actually get that bit into your process because it gives the residents ownership of the recommendations. It gives them uh, to be able to, even the funder to see who those people were who came onto the so whole process and meet those individuals as well. It is also important to use the first session to get to know the jurors whilst grasping their understanding of the topic. It gives a good base point to measure the journey over the duration of the project because the citizens jury process is also a learning curve for a lot of the members. Sometimes some people may come on to a citizens jury and they may not have the knowledge or the background of um, of that subject. So recently we did one around trauma informed. A lot of people didn't know uh, what trauma informed was or what ACEs was, adverse childhood experience. So given all of that, it's quite good. It is um, good to try and get a good variety of speakers to give a jury members enough information to make that educated and informed recommendations. And we will discuss that bit more further on. It is important to have the right facilitators and organisation to deliver the citizens jury to enable to draw the right speakers and the recruitment of community members as well. It's really important to have that. Uh, connection within the community. It's important that you've got those connections with the right organisations and um, mem um, professionals as well to be able to recruit them on the process as well. Thanks, Claire. So the benefits. The benefits is that community involvement is an important aspect of citizens' jury and it bridges the gap between that top-down consultation with little involvement and bottom-up community participation based entirely on lay knowledge and interest. The CJ does fit nicely and it, it provides that good middle ground, as I said earlier. It's allowing the community to get involved and it's not just those organisations dictating and giving and it gives them the knowledge and, and informs the community as well. So it's really that that whole process of working together um, really fits that um, element of uh, CJ. Involving public consultation at an early stage of engagement is key to real empowerment for people for any research development. And I don't think I need to elaborate that giving that voice, giving that empowerment to the community really does make that difference in saying 
and what what I also mentioned, you know, giving the recommendations back to the funder as well, it gives those people that ownership and empowerment. Thanks, Claire. So the barriers, as I said, every process always has barriers. Uh, the barriers is recruitment of juries. So how can we make sure it's a reflection uh, of a true reflection of the audience? Um, so it's important that it, you have that connectivity and you're making sure that if the funder is saying specifically that this is the type of community or residence that we want to be part of this process that you do, you go through, and if not, that you do have that range of demographics, ethnicity, age group, um, to make up your citizens jury. Guest speakers is key, so selecting the right speaker and their availability is sometimes making sure you're getting that balance is really, really good. Um, because sometimes some organ, if, if you've got a time frame, a lot of the times, a lot of the funders, especially to our third sector, they'll come to us and say, you've got three months to deliver this. And within that, you've got to do your recruitment, your citizens jury, you pull your recommendations, write your report as well. And within that time frame, you've got to make sure that you get your speakers on board, making sure that they respond. And sometimes they don't. Some organisations won't respond to you. But um, it's and sometimes some of the organisations don't understand what a citizen's jury approach is. A lot of the time we may just ring them or email them. And if they don't understand the process, so it's quite good to do an event like this, that if somebody did approach you, will understand the whole process and why this process is done as well. <clears throat> Method of delivery. So since COVID has uh, um, been introduced to this world, uh, before that we used to do all face-to-face -face, um, sort of delivery, but now um, in the past two years since COVID, we've done about four or five online sessions as well. And that's quite hard because some um, organisations um, don't support Zoom. Um, and only do teams and most of the community members only use them. so it was one of my recent ones it was quite difficult to get the speakers uh that they uh, it was a police service speaker and they don't support zoom at all so it was really difficult to make sure in advance that your speaker knows that what platform you'll be using um and if they don't to make sure that all your residents uh, have got teams on and they know how to use it most community members now know how to use zoom so that's really really difficult to make sure with that we've even delivered citizens jury taking them out uh, on a residential so it's just different ways of doing it Time frame, including session or times, again, that really sort of does make a difference on your makeup of your citizens jury. So it could be a morning one, afternoon one, evening one. Um, but sometimes it's really difficult to um, to get recruit people because of childcare. And then if you have evenings, um, then it's harder to recruit your speakers because it would be outside their working time. So um, making sure all of that does uh, feed into when you are planning your citizens jury and naturally you will have some members who will drop out during the process and that's why it's, it's good that um, I'm not going to give you any more of that because that's in your task later on. Thanks Claire. So that's me done. I think I, I, I've, I've kept to my time scale. Um, um, Next, you will go into a breakout room. So if we get the questions on the next slide, Claire, um, what I would like you to do, I'm just going to quickly read it out. It will be on chat. I think the answer going to put us on chat and there's about 27 people or so on this call. So I think you'll be broken, taken into uh, three breakout rooms. And there will be Claire who will facilitate one, I'll be in one and my colleague Mohammed Khan will be in the other one to help you and guide you through some of these discussions as well. So what I would like you to discuss is why would you use and develop a citizen's jury in applied research within your field work? Look at the pros and cons of using citizen's jury within your field. Look at the logistics of running your own citizen's jury. And when you are looking at that, so things to actually consider time frame, who are the right guest speakers, recruitment, what is the best approach, 
venues for sessions, what do the funders require and the incentives? Um, as I said, my uh, my colleagues will, uh, my voice is going, sorry, I'm fasting, so all this talking does dry up the throat. So it's really important that, um, again, who are your guest speakers? Because depending on your subject and what you want out of uh, your um, aim and objectives of the citizen jury, those guest speakers do this thing. Um, just before you go, one of you from your group will be note taker and would want need to feedback. So if you haven't got a pen, make sure you've got a pen. So that's your warning that somebody will be chosen within your team to um, be uh, taking notes and speaking. So. Well, welcome back everyone. We had some good discussions in our room, so I hope everyone else did. I will, Dilwara, do you want to, should we pass around to feedback from each each group? Yes, please. Um, uh, do you want to start with your group then, uh, Claire, and ask for them to feedback? Yeah, I think Jane Jane's doing the honours for us. <laughs> we had quite yeah. a wide-ranging discussion, didn't we? <laughs> we did, we did. So please chip in if I've missed any any anything that you think um, is important. Um, so citizens jury as a as a method or a process, um, why we might do it is to get that democratic engagement into a particular issue. Um, and one of the things we talked about was um, around setting of priorities and what's important to those citizens. Um, I suppose um, the pros and cons um, are things like the time frames um, and how uh, it, it can take quite a long time. But I suppose that could also be a pro as well because you're getting quite a long time to get quite a deep engagement, hopefully, or at least potentially. Um, and I think the phrasing of um, citizens and juries is also quite a pro because it gives that um, that flavour, um, uh, that that sort of setting of this thing being about citizens um, and the juries. Um, Paula, you had a really good phrase about that, which I didn't write quickly enough. You might want to add your juries thing. Oh no, it's on. Yeah, I was just I was just name dropping because my degree is in law, and I was talking about the sort of we mentioned the potential actually. Um, although there are quite a, a number of calls to abolish juries in criminal justice about it being egalitarian and, you know, off esteemed lawmakers often talk about juries being the bulwark of our liberties and offering men and women, uh, you know, like people who you see every day. So they talk about the man on the clapping omnibus. And so we were thinking about the actual term of this approach legitimises the um, the purpose by which we would want members of our public to be involved gives it credibility. It's not, it, it sounds the prescription in it uh, adds to its strength. I think was what we were saying. The actual term. Thanks, Paula. Um, and then we had a bit of a discussion about how would you recruit for um, representation. Um, and I think we thought that it was quite labour intensive. Some of us had had some experience before it being quite labour intensive recruiting um, the citizens part to the citizens jury. Um, and then we also talked about um, who who decides on the speakers and is it the juries that determine that? Um, is it a, a speaker set beforehand? Um, and if they are set beforehand, how does how does that match with um, uh, applying um, citizens juries in that sort of co-production arena? Can it can it be done? I think that was it. See, I made some sense of it, Claire, whether it was the right sense or not, I've no idea. <laughs> 
Thanks, Jane. Yeah. Um, well, just to answer one of your questions, um, it is normally, um, sorry, go, 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 uh, the organisation usually does find the speakers and they're usually set uh, in coincides when we're recruiting the members because a lot of the time and um, I think when Emma feeds back from our group, she, she will feed back something element because a lot of the time uh, the funder usually specifies what the aim and objectives of this process is. So in that way, we can look at the whole journey of that. Um, Mohammed, you got your hand up. Do you want to say anything or is that? No, no, no I, I totally agree with you, Deborah. Um, but uh, there's, um, there's, a there's a timing when it comes to um, having, um, uh, getting your speakers in place. And it's, 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 it's how much work you do in the background. So you can, in our group, we were talking about, uh, we, we were just talking about the, the, the guest speakers then. But if you can get a, a really good variety of speakers, it does help you so that then kind of um, helps you move forward but you have to have that in place beforehand because because a lot of the times there's so much time constraints against you um, but some but then like the one mentioned in her um, in her uh, presentation having that fluid approach sometimes you maybe st you start off and something comes up and say oh have you thought about this guest speaker? And then you can actually try and fit another speaker in. So always have that fluidity in there. So you don't worry if you have if you've missed out on something and something comes second week or third week in, you can always fit them in. But it's important also that if if you recruit and then you recruit the guest speakers, you're gonna lose some of the jurors as well because the process is taking too long so it's always making sure that you've got everything um, all set up and you're ready to go so you recruit you to have that conversation in the background you're doing all that booking of sessions you know we talked about incentive in our group so I'm going to go to our group Emma do you want to feed back to our group because we talked a bit more about all of that thanks Emma Emma? Yeah, sorry, it muted again. Um, so one group member sort of gave an example of a specific topic where citizens' juries could be used. So trying to improve and look at how access to clinical services is, in, is enhanced, particularly where people may be dropping out of services and there's not enough, enough understanding about that. Um, but as Adilwara just um, mentioned, we also considered whether it's if it's possible to use citizens' juries where funders hadn't set the questions in advance. Um, so an example of this was using the model to identify research priorities from a community perspective. And I think your sort of point was it could be less directive, but you do need a clear aim and some boundaries. Otherwise, it would be hard to facilitate um, and organise if it was very broad and too open ended. Um, and then we talk more generally about planning and issues to consider. So agreeing with the importance of having people with different expertise as well as the community community. There was one potential challenge for recruitment and timescales if you're potentially trying to re recruit people or, and involve members of the public where there might be trust issues or people aren't engaged in particular services or resident in a particular neighbourhood. Um, and issues raised as well about the importance of researchers listening um, and enabling communities rather than setting everything and pre predefining everything in advance um, and linked to that addressing issues of mistrust. So the example we talked about was ensuring representation from particular ethnic minority groups so that was appropriate to the topic. So hopefully that's covered most things. I, th I think we've covered everything. Uh, anybody else in the group? Did we miss anything out from our group? Yeah, no. Uh, so, Mohammed, your group, who's feeding back from your group? No, I, I was because I was making loads of notes because everybody else. We, we had a very good conversation, and, and I think we, um, the biggest thing for us was that um, citizenship can be applied um, for a, a wide range 
of research, yeah, um, regarding, regardless of whether what background you're coming from, uh, and it's really important to kind of um, accept that. Um, we 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 looked about um, the, the ways of how to do recruitment. We we did focus on a lot on the usual suspects. I don't know whether the other two groups kind of uh, touched on that. Um, and sometimes it's um, it's easy to go down and recruit from uh, the pool of people that you're already working with. But sometimes you know the the findings and and, and the outcomes. Sometimes you won't get the best because you haven't got a, a big wide range of um, the different people coming from different backgrounds. Um, we also said, you know, um, don't be afraid of um, trying to do the system duties yourself. Um, but there is another option as well. There's always two options to do it. So when you focus on uh, trying to deliver your system duty, you can either do it yourself or actually bring somebody else in, and then you can focus on other aspects of that as well. So it's about what's going to work best for you. Um, we were looking at who the best, uh, who who would you have as guest um, speakers? And the task and the question, which Alan, I think was just about to, to answer before we got we got brought, brought back into the, the group was, if you've got somebody who has gone through a service, has had a previous experience of the topic and is a resident, or is it, is it something from the public? It gives you a really good um, balancing organ with anybody who's actually delivering a service or somebody looking around that. So um, if you've got somebody, I think I think Alan was it something to do with diabetes? Was it um, the the talk that you were doing or something? But if you've got somebody who's personally has gone through the service they can actually talk about what works and what doesn't. So when we were talking, um, never got a chance to talk about this, but I think the wise mentioned we did a probation one. We actually got somebody from um, the ethnic minorities who was actually, um, had gone through, been in prison, had come out, and had gone through the, the, the probation service. So that gave us a really good um, insight of what happened. So. That's really where we've got to. I think we could probably have gone for about an hour just doing the breakout session. I think maybe that's something that you might want to look at further on, but we only got through the first little bit in our group. Yeah, we did as well. Uh, how quickly 20 minutes go, didn't it, Claire, as well? I don't know if it was the same for you guys, but I suppose you know everything has to have a time limit um, just to keep us waffling and going on to divert to other subjects. Thank you, everyone, for feedbacks. It seems that most people did pay attention when I was um, uh, doing my presentation, but some of our group members hadn't heard of citizens jury approach before. And it's quite interesting because I asked that question to our group before today, have you heard of that approach? And uh, they had never heard of it or been part of it or been uh, through that process. So it's from what, uh, what we uh, I can tell is that it is a, it is more generally what you guys think really in terms of what, what you feel about the approach. Personally, I think it's great because it's that middle ground, making sure that everybody's working together, that collaboration really of the community, knowing what, they know what's best for them than somebody from the top, from, from a, as a lot of, when I talk to the community, they say the suited and the booted, people coming and making decisions for us. They don't know what's right for us. We know. And Mohammed, I think, loosely touched on talking to people with lived experience because that's really important as well. So getting that um, aspect into your citizens jury as well is that they've been through the process, they understand it and what is the best way uh, to approach something. Um, I've got a few hands up. Um, I think I will go to them before I carry on. Steph, you were first. I think from a community perspective, I think I've took part in lots of research projects within the community and they've offered us a nice lunch, a nice cup of tea and, and I love to shop voucher for attending. The problem with that is we don't want that. We can go home and have our own cup of tea. It's about sustainability and it's also about legacy. Where does this research go? Does it have an impact on our community? Do we find out what impact the research undertaking that research has made? And an end story, it's okay doing the citizens jury, but you've got to have some 
legacy sustainability um improvement for the community within that you're actually whatever subject you choose is discussed and that's what makes communities we have a big lots of opportunities come to our community and they offer us a nice lunch and a nice cup of tea ask us to fill in a questionnaire give us a voucher but we don't hear nothing else and that makes the community super cautious because the yeah, a, a lot of the time um, we as deliverers, uh, we, we, we're quite res uh, restricted as to what, but a lot of the time, like I said, it's always quite good for the citizens jurists to feed back to this um, recommendations. The one that I am actually um, delivering at the moment, the trauma informed one, it is actually being fed into the framework in the borough so you can, those citizens juries are still on that journey with us because we did the adverse childhood experience first and then some other members went on to do the trauma one and that whole journey has been going on for almost a year now and now they're going to see that it's actually been their recommendations some, some of them not all of them uh, are being adopted by the borough so but so a lot of the time as facilitators we are held back because we don't um uh, we feed back to our funder, we write the report and it's up to them to keep that connection going, if that answers your question. Thanks. It does, it does, it does and it doesn't do all it. I think it's up to the funders to keep to keep the, the word yes. out there and stuff. Sometimes the funders don't keep the word out there, the community are left in the dark. We took part in this and sometimes giving people's information like names and addresses, telephone numbers, people are super cautious of that because they don't know where it's going to go as a member of the community and it's it's really important for us when when it was Clark we took part in the current neighborhood resilience project and we we did a series of booklets for our research and then booklets have got a legacy and that legacy is carrying on and it's also had an impact within our community about policies being changed to adopt the findings of that research we took part in I'm not saying that that can be a success all the time and I know there is financial restraints on researchers and research projects but work with the community as you would work with your friend or your neighbour because yes. you've got your community we've got our community as one we're a whole community let's work together to cope it's about co-production co yeah co-production yeah absolutely yeah it's all can that I, can uh, I just Sorry, Alan. Sorry, can I just put in that I really have to go because I'm interviewing somebody for a band eight B job in the NHS, much more money than I was ever on in it, supposedly at two o'clock. So if you're going to have another one of these, can I be invited? Because I really enjoyed this and I've learned an awful lot. Okay. Definitely, Alan. Claire, there right. you go. You've got his name down. Mo, uh, you were next. Go on. Just, just to uh, answer what Steph was saying, what, what, um, if you do a citizen jury, good, well, however you want to put it, um, one thing that is a, is a bonus majority of the times. I don't think we've ever had an opportunity where, when me and deliver what I have done with citizen juries, where this hasn't happened. The group built a good bond, okay, and the group then becomes the, that legacy. And they want to continue to be able to to move forward past the project um, so that's something that kind of always some majority of times comes out and when we try and get our um, uh, our citizen jurors to actually feed back and report back to the the, um, the funders it's actually uh, elevating the jury the jury members onto a platform where they actually they're talking face to face with people who are making decisions. So for them, their growth is actually moving forward. So it's about trying to build that capacity in there as well. So we always do that and we always try and, and some of the jury members say, no, no, we don't want to. But by the end of the day, they, we always step back and we allow them to, to, uh, to, to showcase the findings. And then that builds their capacity and then that moves them forward. So it's not always a uh, kind of a finished article once the jury's finished it, then it's all up to that group whether how they want to then be involved, how they want to then, whether they don't want to be constituted, they want to, they, I mean, they could then look at uh, applying for their own funding to try and continue the work. And it's, as workers, we can help support that. So it's never going to be an, an end project. 
It's how much you want to develop it further, and that's to each individual system. Thanks, Mark. But again, it's really, really important that, again, like you said, Steph, it's all funded um, restrictive as well. It's fair enough saying we set this up a lot of the time as professionals, us as well as a group, we can't continue that support because we've been f commissioned for X number of months or X, um, and it's fantastic that sometimes one after another can come forward, but a lot of the time it's funding that restricts us, and a lot of the time we we touch, we lose touch with certain members. You know, we've set up all with the good intentions of WhatsApp groups and things like that to continue that support mechanism, but at the end of the day, it, it's funding, and if um, if if it's um, and that's what restricts us. But it's great that you know when you you talked about the clerk, uh, that continuation happened with the arc, and you produced that leaflet, and you've got that legacy there. And with anything, all projects in this that kind of legacy. Um, but uh, hopefully, you know you can see it, and the, and again it leads up to the person who's commissioned it to make sure that that link continues and happens. I think we I'm looking at time. We're running out of time. Claire, do you want to wrap up and mm, say yeah. anything? Thank you. Brilliant. Well, thank you everyone for attending. I'm sure people always have other meetings to get to and things. So thank you for attending and contributing. If people do want to get in touch, I've put my email address in the in the chat and I can always put you in touch with Dilwar and you know anyone else if people want to continue conversations. I'm sure we can do that. But do get in touch. We can um you know we've got the recording as well of this if you want to share that and um, otherwise thank you for coming and um it's been it's been lovely to see you all thanks everyone and thanks Dilwara. thank you